I've got this cool antique milk can from my cousin Nick. No, that's not my cousin Nick, that's Woodrow. Some of you remember Woodrow from previous videos. It's been a while since he's been here. Actually, he's been on strike. Tells me I wasn't paying him enough. Frankly, I wasn't paying him at all, but I thought he liked to be here for the fun of the job. Anyway, we worked out a deal, so now he's back. But anyway, this milk can, it says B. Schroeder on the front. Probably the name of the distributor. So this can was on the front porch of my cousin Nick's childhood home for many, many years. My plan is to fully restore this can by treating the rust, knocking out the dents, painting it black, and then putting a large Eagle decal on the back. When this thing is finished, it is going to be incredible. I'm Tom, and welcome to Alley Picked. Milk cans came in many different sizes and shapes. This 10 gallon can was common. The milk wagon would deliver milk in these cans. People would come out of their homes and fill up any container they had. Eventually, milk delivery came in glass bottles. And of course, milk delivery became almost obsolete when it was readily available at the supermarket. This milk can is probably from the 1940s. I don't think the lid's been off of this thing in 50 years. Rust has formed a tight seal. Some people might think that I'm ruining this can by repainting it. Since the value doesn't change much either way, I restore it in a way that makes me happy. This can is badly rusted in spots, especially on the bottom. I'm going to need to knock off as much loose rust as possible. Just knock it off. I'll first try using my Harbor Freight Sandblaster with baking soda as the blast agent. I find it mildly effective. I still end up using some fine sandpaper to prepare the surface for painting. The best way to treat the rust is to use OSFO, which contains a rust converter and a rust inhibitor. I'll use it to paint the whole can inside and out. The OSFO rust treatment has been on here overnight and it can be painted. All of the rust has converted to iron. But before I paint, it still has some tacky residue from the OSFO. I like to clean that off using some paint thinner or mineral spirits. But before I paint, I still want to deal with some of these dents. Not all the dents necessarily. This thing is old and the dents do give it some character. But some of the larger dents and the bent metal, I do want to try to straighten out a little bit. Now to do that, there's a technique they use called hammer and dolly. This is a hammer and dolly set. Auto body professionals use these for knocking out dents. I don't happen to be an auto body professional, so I don't want to buy these tools just for one job. I'll modify this cheap small hammer by slightly rounding the flat head. I also have this steel plate. I'll pound the milk can walls between the steel plate and the hammer. Between trying this method and just some straight pounding from the inside, I was able to make some improvement. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. How would you like to be in an Alley Picked video and win a hat like this? In one of my upcoming videos, I plan to feature viewer projects. I want to see the stuff that you saved from a landfill. Upcycling, woodworking, and restoration projects. Maybe you built something cool out of an old wood pallet. Maybe you restored and rescued an old rocking chair. Maybe you upcycled one thing and turned it into another. Whatever it is, I want to show it off on one of my Alley Picked videos. So I'm looking forward to seeing your creative ideas. You can send pictures of your projects to alleypicked at gmail.com and I'll enter you into a drawing to win this hat. Sorry Woodrow, not this hat but one just like it. I'm going to announce the winner when I release the video. Okay, fine Woodrow, I'll let you pick the winner. Oh, this is cool. Here's something I noticed after I cleaned it up. It says Jim Blom. So Jim, if you're out there, give me a call. I've got your can. For the paint, I'll use this all-in-one paint, primer, and rust preventer. After giving this milk can two coats of black paint, I can still see a lot of scratches, 
and I'm not convinced that black is the color that I want for this can. This is the time to change the color, so I'm gonna spray it using a Hunter Green. Since the sticker I ordered is rather dark, I think that green is gonna be a better choice for the color. Speaking of the sticker, I searched on Amazon and settled on this one for 12 bucks plus taxes and shipping. To apply the sticker, you've gotta be careful. I start by putting a strip of blue tape down the center. The blue tape is less sticky and I don't wanna remove any paint off my freshly painted can. I peel back the right half of the sticker, holding it out of the way and even taping it to the left side while I prepare the surface on the right. Now I can cut off the right half of the backing. In this spray bottle, I have a little dish soap and warm water. I'm just gonna lightly spray. The water allows me to readjust the sticker after I press it down. It's also easier to remove any air bubbles that get trapped in the middle. Before doing the left side the same way, I'm going to use a heat gun or a blow dryer to evaporate the water quicker. The sticker should be cured to the can and then I can remove the top layer. The second important upgrade I make into this can is along the bottom edge. I have some of this rubber trim left over from another project. It has a metal U-channel core inside that grips the edge. Now the can can be placed on a wood floor and not scratch it. 